now, from Hollywood, Romance. What is the most romantic city in the world? Almost anybody will answer, Paris. Almost anybody, that is, except two young romanticists from Elmwood Springs, Wisconsin. And their exceptional answer is set down in the story which follows. So now, with Gene Bates as Virginia and Shirley Mitchell as Eloise, we bring you transcribed Kathleen Hyde's delightful story, The Fall of Paris. why it was so hard to say, why the right words were so hard to find, but I tried to say them as soon as we got settled on the plane to New York, and again, all the way over on the boat, but I couldn't, or wouldn't, or didn't know how, I don't know. Now the boat train was just a few hours away from Paris. I had to tell her now or never. I don't know, Jen. Did you spend much time on the table of irregular and defective verbs? No. Hardly any time at all. I don't think I will either. I think I'll just arrange not to say anything irregular or defective. Why did you say that? What I just said? About doing anything irregular or defective. I didn't say doing. I said saying. Oh. And I was talking about French verbs. Were you? Uh, No. Not exactly. Don't you feel well? Well, of course I feel fine. Hmm, You act sort of funny. Jen, I think we ought to lay cards right smack on the table. I don't think there's any sense at all in either of us holding back little mysteries from one another. Do you? Oh, no. Honestly, Jen, I I thought I knew you pretty well. And frankly, I thought it'd be fun to take a trip like this with you. I know. I've been sort of a drip, haven't I? You've been a hundred percenter, grade A, all the way, drip. Yeah. I don't get it didn't make much difference on the plane. When you got all silent and thoughtful, I thought maybe it was your way of getting air sick. But on the boat, six glorious days, you were a real dud, friend. Go on, I deserve it. But I don't, not at these prices. I don't mean to nag, but clearly something is hacking away at you. And I think we'll both feel better if we talk about it. I'm... I'm glad you feel that way. That's really all I wanted to do was talk about it. But you haven't talked. Are you homesick? For Elmwood Springs, Wisconsin? Well, then what? Eloise, I am 23 years old. You're 24, and so am I. Yeah, that's right. We're 24. Well, now, wouldn't you say... I mean, don't you think people think I'm a good girl... A good girl? Yeah, you know, good. I guess I know. Yes, I think people think you're a good girl. (sighs) That's what I thought. You're going to let this spoil three weeks in Paris? That's exactly it. I am not. I don't care what they think. I am going to enjoy every minute of these three weeks in Paris. Well, fine. Bully. Only when are you going to start? Well, I, uh, I just didn't know how to tell you. But I've been thinking about it ever since we first revved our motors back at the airport in Elmwood Springs. Eloise, I think you ought to know. Yeah, I think maybe I should. When I get to Paris, I am going to, well, live. You mean live? I mean, after all, Paris, Frenchmen, you know how they are. Golly, three weeks. I mean, how to my whole life. Golly. <laughs> well, I, well, I thought I could tell you. I mean, it isn't funny. You may not agree with me or approve, but well, you don't have to laugh. Oh, but I do a little. Look, look, the last word on this page. Huh? Vivre, it means 
to live in French. So, golly, Jim, let's really beave it up. Ah, we shook hands on it. I mean, after all, Paris. Well, I felt much better. Just having things out in the open that way. I know Eloise did, too. I don't suppose Paris had any idea that in a matter of a very few hours the siege was on. Will that be all, mademoiselle? Uh, uh yes. Uh, oh, we. Oui. We. Oui. Uh, uh, I'm just sure shame for some l'argent. Oh, nuts. If I can be of further service. Eloise. Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> you can uh, ouvre la fenêtre if you want to. Open the window? Uh, of course. I'm just trying to find my change purse, and I can't. I tipped at the station. I know, but I can't find my larger. I mean my money. Gin, you didn't. I didn't what? Just because your mother read our hearts were young and gay, you're not carrying your money oh, under your... Here it is. Oh, thank <laughs> heaven. Any other fenetras? No. Merci. And here's the l'argent. Thank you. Uh, merci, mademoiselle. Oh, pas de tout. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Uh, bonsoir. bonsoir. That was a little uh, forward of him, wasn't it? That bonsoir. Oh, well, you know how Frenchmen are. Come on, let's look at our view. Well, you certainly don't see sights like this in Elmwood Springs. What is it? It's that commanding view Marie Armbruster promised us. Only the building next door seems to take a little of the command away. Yeah. Well, she hasn't been in Paris since Orly carried her away after the First World War. They may have made some changes. I wonder what he's like. Orly Armbruster? No, what's his name? Marie's nephew. Oh, Claude. Oh, gee, I wonder. <gasps> Maybe a young Charles Boyer. Or an old Louis Jordan. Hmm. I wonder what he is like. Oh, I hope he's like twins. If he isn't, I'm sunk. The only man in Paris I know is that bellhop. And don't raise your eyebrows at me. You're the one who started all this propaganda about, well, living. Well, I know, but I do think we should exercise some restraint. I mean... <gasps> I'll get it! Hello? Hello, hello. May I speak with Miss Virginia Perkins? <sighs> this is she. Welcome to Paris, Miss Perkins. I am Claude Fautier. Oh, isn't that a coincidence? We were just talking about you. What are you like? I, I mean, how are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Uh, perhaps I'm being too bold. I, I know you must be tired from your trip. But I was hoping we might have dinner. When? Well, any time at all. Well, how about now? Oh, now would be fine. We are not far from your hotel. Say five minutes. Five minutes, ample time. Uh, did you say we? Oui? A friend of mine, Robert Jondeau. Uh, perhaps I am wrong, but I thought Aunt Marie said there were two of you. Uh, there are, there are. And we'd both be enchanté. I, I, I just know we would. Five minutes then. Au revoir. Au revoir. Man, what restraint. What real rock-ribbed restraint. Five minutes, and he's bringing a friend for you. Of course. His friend? The bellhop. I wonder if he'll get another chance to, well, live. I guess it was just about everything a first night in Paris should be. Claude and Robert were, well, just terribly attractive. I mean, really. Like two young Louis Jordan. We had dinner in the Latin Quarter. That's on the left bank, if you know what I mean. Just culture and intellectuals and wine as far as the eye could see. 
And would you believe it? We had absolutely no language problem. I mean, whatsoever. <laughs> Say that again, s'il vous plaît. Well, I just said Paris is the craziest. Uh, but that makes no sense. The craziest what? Well, just the craziest, that's all. I mean, it's, well, it's like the most. It just is. Uh, at the Sorbonne, I have studied English. I understand none of this. Uh, <laughs> it's not English exactly. It's uh, bop talk. Bop talk? Oh, golly. Eloise, help me. Where is she? As a matter of fact, where are they? Oh, somewhere. I do not know. Oh, well, we were all walking along together, weren't we? I mean, well, they left without a word. <laughs> Mademoiselle, they are free, are they not? And this is Paris. Golly. Yes, it is. In Paris, more than two is always a crowd. Oh, what a really lovely way of putting it. The craziest, no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now then, what would you like to do? Do? Yes, to do. To occupy oneself. To fill the time, is it not? Oh, well, yes, it is, yes. I, I mean, that's what it means, all right. Well, what would you like to do? <laughs> I? <laughs> I would like to show you Notre Dame by moonlight and sit with you by the Seine. And later on, when the moonlight pales, drink champagne from your slipper and learn to know you, Mendel. <laughs> I wonder where they went, Eloise and Robert. Are you really so concerned? Well, I... No, no, that is... No! How far is it to Notre Dame? Come, I will show you. We will return to romance in our story, The Fall of Paris, in just a moment. Men or women, young or old, they'll love the gift that gives throughout the year. An extra radio for an extra purpose to give extra zest to living. How about it? The gift that gives throughout the year. Radio for Christmas. And now, for the second act of Romance. far to Notre Dame. Claude was right. There was moonlight all over the place. And the Seine is, well, quite a river. I mean, you can sit alongside it and talk and... Quite a river. And moonlight does get pale later on, like he said. And golly, before you know it, it isn't the moon up there at all. It's the sun. Good night, mademoiselle. Bonsoir. And also bonjour. Good night, Claude. I really must go in now. Of course. I will call you later today. All right. Good night. Mademoiselle. Be quiet. What'd you do? Bring a cricket home with you? Oh. Sorry, Eloise. Oh, this shoe. I didn't mean to wake you. You didn't. What's with the shoe, anyway? Uh, sounds sort of silly, but when in Rome. What happened to Paris? Eloise, Claude drank champagne from my slipper. No kidding. I know it sounds silly, but you know how Frenchmen are. I know how they are. Well, actually, I didn't think it tasted too good. Kind of leathery, you know? And it felt sort of funny walking in one wet shoe. You ought to pay to have the squeak fixed. Mm-hmm. What did you and Robert do? Oh, nothing much. Oh, Eloise, tell me. You really want to know? Well, you know I want to know everything. All right. 
I'll tell you everything. The Eiffel Tower stands 984 feet high. It was erected between 1887 and 1889 and overlooks, among other spots of interest, the École Militaire. The Seine is navigable for small ships below Paris, and within the city limits it is spanned by 33 bridges, of which the Pont Neuf, built in 1578, is the oldest. And then we took the boat trip to the sewers. The boat trip through the sewers? I swept him clean off his feet, obviously. But Robert was so terribly attractive. He still is. Only I remind him of his sister. Oh, Eloise, and here I imagine that you two... Well... I know, living. Well, all I can say is if Robert is a sample Frenchman, no wonder Orly Armbruster looked good to Marie in World War I. I always thought maybe she was shell-shocked or something. How about you? Me? Besides walking around in one wet shoe. What? Ah, Notre Dame by moonlight... We walked along the Seine, sat by it in the little parks, and talked and talked. We had breakfast in a little place near the Palais de Luxembourg. He said he wanted to know me. Jean? Well, he... We... Well, I don't know. In the cold light of day, it sounds, well... Out with it. Well, he held my hand twice. I mean, two separate occasions. He helped me get back in my shoe, you know, after the champagne. And at the door a little while ago, he kissed my hand. Well? Yeah, well, that's what I mean. In the cold light of day, it sounds pretty dull, doesn't it? So we thrashed it out rather thoroughly, Eloise and I. We decided the boys were shy... I don't know how much you know about Elmwood Springs, Wisconsin, but, well, Eloise and I and Elmwood Springs, we're considered to be sort of queens. I mean, we have a lot of dates, and well, we're supposed to be attractive. What I mean is, well, we didn't come to Paris to hold hands and take boat trips through the sewers. I'm, uh, I'm not sure I understand, mademoiselle. Oh, well, maybe I'm not saying it very well, Robert. And maybe I shouldn't butt in this way, but Eloise is my friend. Oh, I know. She is my friend, too, n'est-ce pas? Oh, oui, she is. But... Ma faire no, mademoiselle? No, and mercy ever so much. But about Eloise... Oh, she's having such a fine time, and she is so much the tourist. Always I take her to see monuments and cathedrals and statues and towers. Oh, such a tourist. Uh... In her own words, Robert, she knows Paris like the back of her hand. So, he's well put, no? Uh, no, Robert, just forgive me, but uh, you've got to branch out a little. Uh, uh, how is it? Well, I mean, no more Eiffel Towers, Arch de Triumphs, and above all, no more boat trips through the sewers. Oh, a change of scene, huh? Ah. Uh, <laughs> if I may say, mademoiselle... Uh, Something perhaps uh, more romantic, huh? Oh, Robert, you do understand. Oh, oh, mademoiselle, like the back of my hand. And you won't tell her we've had this little talk. Oh, not a word. Robert, vous et un doll. Off on another tour of the Louvre? Um, I don't uh, think so. But you are going somewhere with Robert. Um, yes. Oh, my goodness, you're being pretty coy, aren't you? Um, no. Well, your business. I'm just glad that in our last couple of days in Paris, something has set you singing. You don't have anything to sing about? No. Why should I? I, um, <coughs> just wondered. <sighs> there, how do I look? Just wonderful. Good for me. Well, I'll get it. I heard you. Hello? Hello, Virginia. Why, it's, uh, it's Claude, isn't it? I have been thinking, mademoiselle, and I wonder, there is not much more time you are here 
And, well, I... Uh, yes? Would you... That is, tonight. Would you come to my studio, Virginia? Would I... What? We could have a little supper here. And I thought later, perhaps, you would pose for me if I asked you nicely. Oh, my gosh. Is that some more of your Bob talk, Virginia? No, I mean, yes. I, I mean, when? I could call for you in half an hour. All right. Au revoir. Uh-huh. More uh, <coughs> Notre Dame by moonlight, Virginia? Well, I don't think so. But uh, you are mm. going somewhere with Claude? Mm. Yes? You're being pretty coy, aren't you? Oh, no. Um, vive la France. Ah, huh, Jim? Vive la... Vive. Golly, Wisconsin's a beautiful state, isn't it? Yes, it is. We can't be more than a couple of minutes from home. We passed the Four Corners Road about a mile back. Well, yeah, they'll all be at the station, you know that. The whole crowd. I know. Eloise, we just have a few seconds, and you've never told me. Every time I've asked, you've just rolled your eyes. What happened between you and Robert that night? You want to know it all? Everything? Everything. Well, we drove to Orton's. Joan of Arc's hometown. We saw her statue, the Cathedral of Saint Croix, the Palais du Martois. Eloise, is that all? Total one handhold, two head pats, one cheek tweak. Oh, I couldn't be sicker if it happened to me, and it did. But you, he said he was going to ask you to pose for him. I did. Elmwood Springs. Elmwood Springs, Wisconsin. Well, well, go on, well, well, go on. Go on, you posed for him, and... Well, let me put it this way. I'm giving the picture to Mother for Christmas. I'll be... I'm dressed just like Whistler's mother, only he called it Portrait of Virginia. Well, we'll just pretend that nothing ever happened. <laughs> and nothing ever did. Oh, welcome hey, home. Hey, Amy. Wait to hear all about it. Now tell me. Tell me before you utter a word to anyone else. Who did you meet? Where'd you go? And are Frenchmen really romantic? Are and... they? Listen, you want to tell her, Jim? Well, not everything, of course. Oh, golly. <laughs> oh, you lucky people. Oh, you've no idea how lucky. Why not five minutes after we got off the boat train, two of the handsomest Louis Jordan types you ever saw? Well, they were. Romance is produced and directed by Norman McDonnell with editorial supervision by Het Mannheim. You have heard The Fall of Paris, specially written for romance by Kathleen Height, starring Jean Bates and Shirley Mitchell. Featured in the cast were Ben Wright, Paul Duboff, Parley Bear, and Kay Stewart. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to hear Romance, transcribed next week at this same time. In just a few minutes on most of these stations, you'll hear Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad as Marshal Matt Dillon. Matt claims cheating isn't enough of a reason for a killing and fights to prove his point. Then tonight, another Gunsmoke program, a story of two brothers whose reunion causes plenty of trouble for everyone. Be sure to listen for both these Gunsmoke programs today. This is the CBS Radio Network.